This is the last tutorial that you'll ever need if you want to create a dialogue system. You won't need to buy any assets after this and trust me, I have bought tons of assets from the Unity Asset Store, followed loads of tutorials. I think I've finally come up with the easiest, cleanest and most straightforward way to build a dialogue system for any kind of gaming. So let's get right to it. I've got a brand new project here, okay? The first thing I'm going to do is set up my scene. Let me walk you through that. Okay, I've set the canvas up with our basic user interface, so in case you want to copy this directly, I've got the canvas here, um, which is where all the UI elements go. I've then got a dialog box, parent, that's got a vertical layout group in it, you can see over in the inspector. I might turn this cursor on, hold on. Okay, you should be able to see the cursor now, so I've got the vertical layout group for the parent and the inspector. Then I've got my first um, text mesh pro text here, which is the title and then it'll be the body text. Then I've got a button parent containing the button for the dialogue response options. I've done a horizontal layout group. Okay, I'm now gonna run through these five scripts that I've made. This is all you're gonna need, but I will have somewhere that you can copy them. I just want to give you a brief explanation of them all. So right now we've got actor, we've got dialogue, we've got the dialogue manager, we've got the dialogue node, and a dialogue response. So let's go into Visual Studio. So let's go into actor first. So actor is basically the AI or the character in your scene that you're talking to. So they'll have a name and they'll have a dialogue associated with them. There's a method here for triggering a conversation just called speak to. This is what you would call if you say click on the AI character. You would trigger speak to, which would then go to the dialogue manager and start the conversation. And I'll go into that in a wee minute. Dialog here is a scriptable object, which means it's an object that stores data that we create through the Unity interface. And we will do that in a wee minute. Basically, all this has got is a dialog node, which a dialog node, if we go into it, this is what the AI character is saying to us in the conversation. So this is the text that they're saying to us, and this is the list of possible responses that we can give. And you'll see this is a class called dialog response, which is the fourth script I'll go into. So all that is is response text, that's what we are saying back, and then a list of, no, uh, sorry, not a list, but just one singular node, which was the previous class we were in, basically meaning once we say this text back, if we choose this response, this is where the conversation goes next. The most important part of all this is the dialogue manager because this is going to go on an object in your scene, and this controls all the dialogue. So here we'll have... Um, we're going to have references to those UI elements that we created a wee minute ago. Uses a singleton structure here so that we can basically call this from anywhere else in the game, any other script. We've got a method here for starting the dialogue. So basically we're showing the text, we're going through the buttons and we are assigning a response to the buttons and we're adding a listener there to select response, meaning that if we click the button for a certain response, it chooses that response it goes back to start dialog, which is this method here, and basically goes to the next node. And you see a tree-like structure starting to appear here where we can branch off in different directions, depending on what response we give in the conversation. Now, what you want to do next is come back into Unity. I've added a game object here called controller, and I've assigned the dialog manager to it. So if you lock that in the inspector so it doesn't go away, just up in the top right, Come into your canvas and these response buttons here, drag one of them down into your project files to create a prefab because we're actually going to um, instantiate those through the script. So just delete the ones out of the scene, but keep the parent, make sure you keep that parent there. Now we just basically want to assign these um, values in the dialog manager. So dialog parent is simply going to be the dialog box parent. So that's the main container for all the dialog stuff in the UI. The title text is just going to be the title text. Bear in mind here, um, this isn't a Unity UI text. This is a text mesh pro UG UI, um, which you will see in here. You might be used to seeing just text. This uses text mesh, text mesh pro, um, which is probably worth another video. But it's much more powerful, gives you much more options than the generic Unity UI text. So back to it, let's drag body into dialog body text. The button prefab is the prefab that we created, so it'll be in your project files. And then the button response container is the button parent 
um, and that is basically just showing where to instantiate those buttons. Now what you can do is right click in your project, go to create and you should see now an option if you've created that dialog scriptable object called dialog asset. So go ahead and create that. Just call it dialog oops dialog one. And if you go into the inspector and open the root node, you can just start creating um, some text here. Okay, so you'll see here, if you have a look, um, you can add the dialog text. So that's the first um, bit of text that you'll see when you start the conversation. Then you can go about adding responses. So I've got um, read it, throw it in the bin for the scroll. And then the, the text you assign here, and then these are the next nodes. So, and then this is what it will say back. So you can see it branches out into like a tree-like structure. So once you're happy with that, you can go ahead, create another game object in your scene. I've just called it NPC because that's what it will represent and add the actor script to it. Then you can assign your name. So this is going to be the ancient scroll and then assign your dialogue. So drag in that scriptable object dialogue into here and come back to actor because I have made one change and I want you to know that this is purely for testing. So I've added an update call to actor and basically I'm just checking for the space bar getting pressed. And if it does, I'm going to call speak to and you press space. You'll see that the conversation starts. So I could press throw it in the bin. The conversation ends. We'll start it again, press space. And I select you gaze upon the magical scroll. So I decide to read it. It speaks of tales of dragons and demons. Oh, it's a wee bit too scary, so I put it down. Or you can go in again. I decide to read the scroll. It's not too scary, so I just read more. There's one mistake from earlier that I would like to just correct here. If you come into the dialogue manager, what I have added here is as last node. Um, and what that does is it checks if there's any responses associated with that node. So if there's no responses, if it, if it can't display any buttons for a response, then that returns true. Come back to the dialogue manager. That basically, the code that was here before um, was a wee bit faulty. So you won't include this as last node and then that will hide the dialogue. Now that is going to change your setup and the, the dialogue object a little bit. You see what I did a minute ago, I decided to read more, which caused the scroll to burst into flames, but this message never actually got shown because there was no response. So I just have to add one more node in here called close, which allows me to see this message. So I'll show you how that works just now. If we press play again, start conversation, and I decide to read. And then we're at this part here, so I decide to read more. The scroll bursts into flames, and then I can close. And that's the way that most conversations or um, sort of reading portions of RPGs work anyway. So I hope that helped. It's very simple, but the good thing about this is it's nice and clean and it can be easily expanded upon to add more systems like quest systems um, or RPG stats in there as well. So if you liked it, give the wee video a like. I really appreciate that. And check out the code in the description of the video. Thanks very much for sticking around. I'll see you next time.